In today's video, we're going to go over four different tables um, and calculate the rate of change and the constant of proportionality. Uh, these two things will help us to determine a few things about each table, like if the relationship is linear and if it's proportional. Now, the first thing we need to understand is what is rate of change and what is the constant of proportionality. So the rate of change is just a uh, ratio of the change in x over the change in y. Uh, we use the, the symbol delta in math um, and many sciences to show change. And one way you could remember this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Those of you who are familiar with slope understand that m is the same thing as slope, and that's the slope formula. But these are the same thing. Uh, change in y is, is equal to y2 minus y1. And then the constant proportionality, we use the letter k, and it's just y over x. So the slope will be using two different points. The constant proportionality we will find for each point, but um, each point will, will fit in here. Um, so I'm going to start with the slope or the, the rate of change first. And what we're going to do is um, use what I call the caret method. Now, we're going to do these arrows just outside here on our table. And those are our, our carrots, if you will. All right, and what we're going to do on each carrot is tell how we got from this number to that number. We're going to show, show the change um, in y is what it is. So for here, we added 7. From 14 to 21, we added 7. And from 21 to 28, we also added 7. On the flip side, to go from 1 to 2, we added 1. From 2 to 3, we added 1. And from 3 to 4, we also added 1. All right, what we just calculated is on this side, those are all of our changes in y. And over here, it's all of our changes in x. So now we just need to find the proportion of those two. Um, so we take the y value and put it over the x value. So we have 7 over the 1 for y over x. We have 7 over 1. And we have 7 over 1. So because on our table we just calculated that each point had a rate of change of 7 over 1, we can confidently say that this has a constant rate of change, which means that this is a linear relationship. Now, if we also want to tell if it's proportional or not, well, just to, to remind you the criteria to be proportional, a function has to be both linear and it has to pass through the origin. Well, this table doesn't tell us if it passes through the origin. So what we can do now is instead of um, using the rate of change, we're going to use the numbers given to us and calculate the constant proportionality for each point. And so we're going to do that inside the table. So y over x. Okay, y over x for here is going to be 7 over 1, and that's equal to 7. And then for here, it's 14 divided by 2, and that's equal to 7. And then we have 21 divided by 3, and that's equal to 7. And then we have 28 divided by 8, excuse me, 28 divided by 4, which is equal to 7. So that's our k value there. And because our k value is the same all the way down, we can now say that this um, relationship is linear and proportional. So not only is it a straight line, but we know that its y-intercept will be the origin at 0, 0. All right, so that, let's uh, do the same process on another, another problem. So we have this table. First, we're going to do our carrots. Then we're going to say how we got from one point to the other. So 27 to 21, now we're subtracting 6. 21 to 17, we're subtracting 4. And 17 to 7, we subtracted 10. The other side, you'll notice, it's not subtracting, it's going up. So we're adding 3, we're adding 2, and we're adding 5. So we have our delta y over here. We have our delta x over here. Now we're going to find the uh, ratio between the two. So we have negative 6 over positive 3, which is going to be equal to negative 2. We have whoops, negative 4 divided by positive 2, which is equal to negative 2. And then we're, last one, we have negative 10 divided by positive 5, and that's equal to negative 2. So on this one, even though we were going down, it is still a constant rate of change of negative 2. So our slope, or our constant rate of change, is negative 2 here. And what that ratio tells us, and what that slope tells us, is... You can think of these fractions, I'm going to write it a little bigger here. You can think of these as a fraction of negative 2 over 1. And whenever we have a fraction for a slope like this, the top is the change in y, and the bottom is the change in x. So as x increases by 1, y is decreasing by 2. So you could do that vice versa. If we subtracted 1 from the x values, 
we could add to, to the, the y values here. And you can see that relationship between these. I know that all of these numbers are not added in here or written in here, but we could imagine that there's a, uh, there's a 4 and a 5 in here, right? And we could see that as it's 3 um, to 4, then it would be 27 to 25, and then 4 to 5, 25 to 23. And I know I squeezed that in pretty good, but 5 to 6, 23 to 21. So it's a, just a negative slope means that the, um, the, the numbers act inversely. So um, even though it's negative, we, we do say that this is linear. All right. Now let's try our constant of proportionality. If you remember, that's uh, k is equal to y over x. Right. And so our k comes from here. I guess I should have written that over here, but k equals y over x. And we're going to do that inside. So now we have 27 divided by 3. And that's equal to 9. Then we have 21 divided by 6, which is equal to, to 3.5. So we can already stop and say, okay, this is not proportional because every single one of these values would have to be the same. And after we did the second one, we can now tell it's not. So it's linear and it's non-proportional. There's nothing wrong with that. That means it's a straight line, but it will not start at the origin. It will not have a y-intercept of 0, 0. This one will have a y-intercept of, well, if we do the math, it'd be a 33. Um, so there's another one. Let's do another example. So on this one, we do the carrot method. All right, carrot, 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 carrot. All right, we're adding three over here. Okay, then we add 15 over here. And then we add 18 right there. Oops. On the left-hand side, the x values, we added one. And then we added five. And then we added six. And I'm sure you're starting to see the pattern. Um, triangle or delta y delta x we find the ratio it's 3 over 1 it's 15 over 5 which is equal to 3 over 1 and then we have 18 over 6 which is equal to 3 over 1 so our rate of change is 3 over 1 so we now know it's linear All right let's do our k value k is equal to y over x so 15 over 5 is equal to 3 18 over 6 is equal to 3 33 over 11 is equal to 3, and that's a weird 3, and 51 over 17 is equal to 3. So they're all the same, which means linear and proportional. Now on the two examples we've done so far that are linear and proportional, you may notice that the rate of change and the constant of proportionality are the same. Anytime you have a problem that's linear or a relationship that's linear and proportional, the constant of proportionality and the rate of change will be equal to one another. Now let's do one more example just to make sure we have it down. Okay. So we're going to start with the carrot method. All right. So we added three. We added three. We added five. We added three. Added two. Added five. Let's change in y. Change in x. All right, so we find our ratio, 3 over 3 is equal to 1. All right, then we have 3 over 2 is equal to 1.5. And then we have 5 over 5, which is equal to 1. So 1, 1.51, 1. we do not have a constant rate of change, so it's nonlinear. And because the first stipulation of being proportional or not is it has to be linear, it's nonlinear and non-proportional. It cannot be proportional without being linear. All right, so there you have it. Uh, like I said, we call it the carrot method. Um, it's not the only way to do it, but it's certainly one uh, way to find the rate of change and the constant of proportionality.